Hello and welcome back to the Little Scale Cars YouTube channel. Today in the review box we have the second new for 2024 Hot Wheels mainline casting for review. This one is the Proton Saga, a car that many of you may have never even heard of before, but was extremely popular choice for one country in particular. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review. So getting things started with our casting, we can see that our proportions do appear to be very nice, very good. Go ahead and pop the kind of real life car up in the corner there so you can kind of compare them a little bit. But as you can see, it does resemble a Proton Saga, which is exactly what you'd want to see. So as far as our plastic detailing goes, we do have quite large sections of plastic here. This entire rear bumper, it kind of skirts down here to the bottom panel here. And then it's also the entire like front bumper section. So there is quite a bit of plastic, but it does blend in decently enough, I feel like, especially at a mainline point. Another cool thing about this is the headlights are actually integrated into the windshield, so that's nice. You won't ever have to worry about this casting not getting headlight tampos, so that's always cool to see. We did get mirrors cast in on this particular one, which is always another thing that you like to see, and they're actually like pretty good sized, I think. Sometimes they can be a little bit large. But other than the mirrors, we did get all of your body lines casted in, looking really good. This odd shaped door back here casted in. This door up here, perfectly fine. We have a gas cap on the other side. Rear, you have kind of the lights and license plate all casted in line wise. Um, and then up front, you do get these two little like dimple things casted in as well. So for our paint and deco, we just got this nice bright red color which matches the real life car pretty nicely. This was the first edition, the first release of this. And at this point, this is still the only deco that's actually been released that I know of at least. There's been a couple different card art variations, but um, as far as the actual release, this is the only one we have thus far. Taking a closer look at the details, we can see that we do have the headlights that we talked about earlier, which is always good to see. And then there's also like a little a bit of silver paint on the edge of them. I'm assuming this is some sort of reflector or something like that. It looks good though. We do get a Proton logo there, nice and big. And we even get some lines kind of tampoed in up front here, which looks good. Making your way down the side, we get kind of this brake piece that goes, it's actually like, I believe a piece of the interior up front, but going down the car itself, it is just a tampo. You get a Hot Wheels tampo there. You get a Saga right there. You get the door handles and the little like place where you put the key in. So lots of tampo work going on on the side, which is nice to see. It is on both sides as well. However, coming to the back here, we do not get anything. You get a spot where a logo would be, you get spots where the taillights would be, and you get a spot where the license plate would be. But if you want them to be there, you're gonna have to paint them on yourself, which is a little disappointing, but seeing as that it is a mainline, I guess it's not the most surprising thing. Moving into our roll test, it should be no surprise that it does roll and it rolls very smoothly. I went ahead and put this one on the scale and it comes out to be 31.37 grams. So heavier than the Singer we just reviewed, but still pretty lightweight as far as Hot Wheels typically go. Pros and cons. So the first big and most important pro is that this, as far as I know, is the first Saga in 164th. It's definitely the easiest way to get this one, that's for sure. So if you want a Proton Saga for your collection, uh, this is a very easy way to get a hold of it now. The other big pro that I'm gonna give this one is that this, as far as I know, was the first ever Malaysian car. Uh, Hot Wheels are produced in Malaysia, so it is actually pretty cool that now Hot Wheels is producing the Malaysian car in Malaysia. I think that's pretty cool, and I think the Malaysian collectors really enjoy that fact as well. For your cons though, I would say the only big massive con, especially that the fact that this is only like a dollar twenty-five-ish, the only con I can really say is those taillights not being there. It's definitely a bummer. Um, it's, I guess we did get very nice detailing for the other two sides that did get tampos, but that would have been nice to see. Maybe it will get a premium or semi-premium release down the road and that problem will be rectified. For some quick size comparisons, here we have it with some other four-door models that you might have. With the Dodge Charger Hellcat from Matchbox and the Maserati Jubilee from MSZ Diecast. Hey 
And here we have it with some other random cars that you might have in your collection with the recently reviewed Hot Wheels BMW M5 and the Auto World Dodge Stealth. So with all of that out of the way, it is now time to give my final scores. So our hype level, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. The hype in Malaysia and some other Asian countries was pretty high because you guys are very familiar with this car. And uh, like I said, the first ever car produced in Malaysia, I think the Malaysian collectors were very excited. But outside of that kind of general area, uh, the hype wasn't quite there. The American collector definitely didn't have a whole lot of hype for it other than the fact of just a standard new casting level of hype. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, definitely some hype there, but not as high as some other models. The execution. So I'm a pretty big fan of it, but I don't think it's perfect. There's a little too much plastic for my liking, and the tampo work could have been better in some spots. But I'm going to give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10 on execution still. Community input. Here is what the community of Diecast had to say. As you can see, opinions definitely varied, and uh, opinions definitely varied based off of region uh, for where the collectors live to, I believe. But that is going to average out to be about an 8.4 out of 10. So when we take these three categories, add them up, and divide them, we can see that our average score is going to come out to be about an 8.6 out of 10. I think that's a pretty fitting uh, final score for this casting. Um, I am always just going to be a big fan of a new casting. If it's a real-life car and not a fantasy release, I'm probably going to pick up at least one. Uh, this one was done pretty well, uh, especially proportions-wise. I would say it's the best part to see, so that's always good. I think the hype just really was not there outside of Malaysia because I was, with all the hype that I kind of saw online that certain larger creators were trying to throw with this one, I, I definitely thought that this one was going to be tough to find, but it wasn't. It was extremely easy to find. As a matter of fact, now it's been about eight months since this one released in the U.S., and you can still find this one on pegs pretty easily. But I am still very glad that the Malaysian collectors got this release because, like I said, they were very excited for it, and it definitely showed that their excitement online. The large bits of plastic and the lack of the rear tampos are the most disappointing aspects of the release. But again, that's all stuff that can and probably will be addressed with future releases. I would actually be pretty surprised if this casting does not end up going full premium at some point. It just seems like something Hot Wheels would definitely do. It's just, it's not bad for a mainline. And I, overall, I would say it's definitely one that you should get. Add it to your collection, no matter what kind of a fan of cars you are. Just to have it, just to kind of have the uniqueness. It's only going to cost you like a dollar. And it's definitely something that you should at least have this first edition of, uh, even though you're probably not going to collect uh, every release of it. And with that, guys, that will wrap up this review. Let me know what your thoughts were on this particular model down in the comments below. Make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next video.